and you'll see what that's for in a little bit. And again, let's back out, go into normal mode, turn gravity back on, and hit simulate local. Now the skirt's awfully high up here, so what I probably want to do is go into group sub-object mode, select the waste verts. I'm going to turn the constraint off for a second. Go back out, simulate local, and now this, this dress should actually kind of slide down a little bit. And it's going to go through its process. I'm going to go ahead and stop this because it may take a little bit for it to actually kind of settle into the place that I want it. Okay. So now it's kind of fallen down a little bit. And so I can go back into group sub-object mode. Select the waistline verts. And now I'm going to turn that constraint back on. And I can simulate local again. of course it moved everything back up because when I selected those verts they were up much higher. So in this case what I want to do is I'm actually going to delete that constraint. I'm going to delete it and I'm going to rerun that simulation let it fall down again so I'm going to stop this again so I can get it back into play. Okay so let's um, Now we've got those verts selected. Let's go ahead and make a group and we'll call them waste non-bias. Okay. And now we're going to preserve it to the surface so that it maintains where it is now, not where it was. That was the mistake that I made. It's a good one to remember. And again, we're going to do 0.9 and 0.9. And I'll tell it to use these properties so it knows where to affix these. And again, if I hit simulate local, looks like I may have forgotten a vert. Looks like there was a single vert not with that group. Always fun. Wow, that's new and different right there. So I now I've got a vert passing through or trying to connect itself to this part of the geometry, considering it was so far out, it thinks that it should connect to this surface, not this one. So that's always fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of backtrack a little bit. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to delete the waste vertices group. And then in this case what I'm going to do is go through and in simulate local mode once again I'm going to let the the cloth kind of pull itself back together. So I'm going to do it damped this time so that the, the cloth tends to settle a little bit more. And you can see that vert's now kind of coming back into line, but I'm not getting all the pull down into in through gravity. And what I want to do is make sure that that vert is actually closer to this part of the torso than it is the arm, so it doesn't get sucked out as it did before. So this is another good lesson uh, for you, just a little side tip on you know kind of real world usage. So now I've got this settling in there. Okay, so if I go back into group sub-object mode, I have pretty much everything on the, the top selected. So I'm going to make a group, waste, non-bias, and surface. That's going to be the surface. And now I'm going to simulate local damped. Whoops, before I do that, let's go into group. taking a little while to get to where I wanted it to be. 
apologize for that, but you're you're getting a kind of a good indication of the workflow and some of the, the challenges you may face. And that's always a, a handy thing to know as well as to when things kind of go wrong, what to do to correct them. So now I'm back up in ClothFX. I'll hit Simulate Local. And this vert shouldn't jump out here now. Now it's going towards towards the waistline, which is where I wanted it to begin with. So now I can hit Simulate Local and let this this dress, uh, you know, much longer, almost ankle length, drape down and let it be affected by gravity. I think it pretty much is. So now I'm ready to simulate. So at this point, let's save again. So I'm going to save this. So I hit save as. Okay, so I'm going to call it GM aligned. Or I should say just example aligned. So it's going to save all that out for me. And now I can go ahead and start simulating. And I'm going to simulate each one of these passes separately and uh, Instead of forcing you guys to watch as you've watched me kind of struggle through getting these things set up, when I'm done, you'll get to see them. So I'll stop now and be back in a little bit. All right, so now that this is done, even though these dresses aren't exactly the same, I want you to kind of watch the area right here on both of them because you'll notice that this one is going to give you some interesting stretching that the other one doesn't provide. And so you can see that the the skirt is actually behaving according to the cloth. So you're going to get folds in different ways than you would across the same thing here. You're going to get different types of creasing because of the bias cut cloth now. And that's something to keep in mind if you want to start doing kind of some some uh, rather exotic looking clothing. Start putting your panels at uh, odd angles instead of making them all on bias, on uh, weave of the, of the product, and you'll get some pretty interesting results.